today I'm talking about another hidden gem day trip within 90 minutes of the Sydney CBD. Patonga was once a sleepy fishing village and a low-cost post-war holiday destination for Sydney siders. It's still popular for vacations, but it's also a fascinating day trip from Sydney. About six kilometres from the mouth of the Hawkesbury River, Patonga is on Brisk Bay with a 1.5 kilometre beach running in an arc roughly east to west. On the west side is Patonga Creek, a camping ground and the main residential area. Some of the finest oysters were once harvested from the creek. In fact, the name Patonga is a corruption of the Karingai Aboriginal word for oyster. The creek is shallow, calm and ideal for kayaking. There's even a leash-free section of the creek for your dog between Brisk Street and Jacaranda Avenue. There are dozens of mid- to high-end rental cottages, many with beach or creek frontage. Patonga Village and the wharf are near the centre of the beach, and the ominously named Dark Corner is at the very eastern end of the beach. The beach is well protected from ocean swell, and the water is normally calm, good for swimming, paddling and fishing. The first white settlement at Patonga was back in the early 1900s. Until 1937, the only access was by ferry. Then a road was built from Umina. It was narrow and treacherous, with falling rocks in some parts, but it allowed Patonga to develop. These days, the road is better, but the last couple of kilometres from the ridge down into Patonga is not where you want to be on a dark, rainy night. In the village, there are no shops anymore. There's just a rather classy hotel called The Boathouse, serving coffee, drinks and meals. And it's also dog-friendly. Back in the years after World War II, up until the 80s or so, there was a butcher, baker and a general store that also housed the post office and Commonwealth Bank branch. And there was a sly grog shop. I know about the sly grog shop because that's where my aunt sent me to collect her supplies when I was a pre-teen back in the 1950s. Which brings me to the eastern end of the beach, dark corner, where my aunt lived. Ancestors of my aunt and other squatters built shacks there starting about 1914 after being granted permissive occupancy on what was then Crown Land. It's now Brisbane Water National Park. Over time, the dark corner shacks became more permanent beachside cottages built from timber, fibro and corrugated iron. The building materials travelled by train to Brooklyn and then by ferry to Patonga. Today, only five of the original eight or nine cottages remain. The one my aunt occupied until about 1980 was destroyed by fire sometime before 2011. It was second from the right. Today, there is no trace of the cottage other than the paperbark tree that once protected us from the strong afternoon sun. One other point of interest over in Dark Corner is an entrance to a section of the Great North Walk. You can hike over the headland to Pearl Beach or take the longer 24km Girakool Trail. The Great North Walk links Sydney and Newcastle with a 260km bushwalk. And that's Patonga, a slice of history and some memories of my aunt.